Good morning, my beloved Christ Point family. We want to welcome you all back once again this Sunday, 10th of July, 2022, to our 10 a.m. service. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, good morning and welcome to Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. My name is Carlos Corrado. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your homes once again to share God's word with you. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, are here to share the good news of salvation to everyone, beginning here at home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven and are also a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Melbourne want to be able to help people connect to their destiny, and their destiny is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We then want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is for me again a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's word with you. As always, we want to remind you to keep up to date with us via the Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple and Android devices. We encourage you to like and follow us on Facebook, as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels and check out our website. Now, please remember to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the gospel to the ends of the earth. This 2022, the focus of our church, of your church, is growth. And I'm not talking about a growth in size, no numbers, but rather spiritual growth within every single one of us. Over the last few months, Pastor Peter Anthony and I have been covering messages which have looked at several aspects of the life of Jesus, which have and continue to allow and help us to grow spiritually. This 2022, we at Christ Point Church Melbourne want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, and also the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. This morning, we shall be starting a new series entitled, Faith 2022. And this morning, we shall look at the first installment message entitled, The Bible, The Authority for Faith. But we'll see that a little later this morning. Over the next few months, we will go through the following series, which will take us all the way to the end of the year. In the month of August, we shall be taking a look at a new series entitled, Promises, where we shall be exploring God's promises for His children. And in the month of September, we shall develop a series entitled, The Assignment, where we shall dive into topics which cover our responsibility as Christians and true children of God. We then shall enter into the month of October, where our series for the month will focus on Jesus, with our series entitled, Jesus Unfiltered, and we'll be looking at several messages on Jesus. Now, but before we get there, though, we shall continue with our Bible studies every second Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. I encourage you to join Pastor Peter Anthony as he takes us through an in-depth study of the Holy Scriptures via our second channel, Christ Point Midweek, which you can find via our app. You can also join us every second Wednesday night to our Connect services at 7.30 p.m., where we shall be covering practical and biblical principles to live a more holy life during these trying and unprecedented times. Our Wednesday night Connect services will be available via Facebook and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. Remember also to join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. to watch our segment, The Sermon of the Week. Then on Fridays at 7.30 p.m., we will have El Sermon de la Semana or The Sermon of the Week in Spanish only via Facebook and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. We ask that you keep praying with and for us as we continue with our mission of pointing people to Christ. I also want to remind you that the Christ Point Church Melbourne and Red Door Men's Ministry Camp will be held from Friday the 29th to Sunday the 31st of July. The theme of our camp is Reboot, as in live, sometimes a reboot is all we need to get things back on track. The cost is of $120, which covers accommodation, meals, including a dinner at the local tavern for Saturday night. We shall have wonderful preachers and speakers who will be sharing God's word with us. We shall share communion with our friends and brothers from various churches that have been invited. We have plenty of activities prepared from mountain climbing, sightseeing, bonfires, and plenty of hearty meals. Now, if you're interested in joining us, please make contact with us via our app, our email, and also our WhatsApp number, which appears on our social media. I want to ask you to please bow your head, close your eyes, and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of heaven and earth, we thank you for the blessings of life and health that you give us. We thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon every single one of our families. 
Thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be in your presence again today, even if it is through the use of modern technology, through YouTube, through Facebook, and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. We come together in the unity of our faith in you and you alone. We ask, Lord, that you soften our hearts so that your word can penetrate to the deepest part of it. May you clear our ears so that we may be able to hear your voice clearly. May you steal our minds as to think and focus only on you. May we always grow in maturity and strength through your word. May we understand that you have called every single one of us to serve you and you alone. Bless us beyond measure and fill us with your peace. Give us the desire to serve you more and more with our hearts, with our minds, and also with our hands. Father, we want to surrender our all to you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, may we have the humility to follow you above all else and the passion to live our lives for you and you alone. May we seek to know you more and more and dismiss what this crazy and sinful world is offering us. May we embrace your love. May we embrace your grace. May we embrace your forgiveness. May we reject darkness and embrace your light. May we be brave enough to step up to your calling of every single one of us. Soften our hearts so that we may gracefully choose faith in you. Heavenly Father, we recognize that we are utterly dependent on you. The problems that we face in this world are too great to be solved by human ingenuity and also strength. As we approach you this morning, we recognize our inadequacy, but we also have the confidence because of your resourcefulness. We're glad because we know that you love us and you desire the very best for us in life. Help us to realize, however, that we must respond to you with dedication if we are to realize the fruits of your love. Heavenly Father, may we be drenched in your blessings and engulfed by your love. We pray again that you help us to grow this year, to grow in faith in you, and to grow in commitment to you. Help us to always be conscious that we are but stewards of your grace. Help us to be good managers of that which you have entrusted to our care. We make mistakes when we try to plan our lives without you. We can be our best only when we are in the center of your perfect will and surrender ourselves to it. This morning, we come to you with our problems and ask for your guidance. We come with our weaknesses and ask for your strength. We come with our needs and ask for your fullness. We pray and think of those who are with ill health, those who are struggling with cancer, those who are struggling with kidney failure, those who are struggling with liver failure, those who are struggling with diabetes, those who are sleep deprived due to their lack of health, with intestinal issues, COVID-19 and its variants, those who are suffering from their eyesight and other complex medical issues. We pray for those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Father, give them comfort and embrace them with your love and your mercy. We pray for our friends who are currently traveling overseas for various reasons. We pray for our friends and missionaries in the Balkans. Lord, we pray that you bless them and protect them and their children. Heavenly Father, you know every single one of them by name. Bless them according to your perfect will. Give them the peace to know that you are in full control and that no matter the situation, you will be honored and glorified. As to any situation, Jesus is the answer. We pray that you remain with us as we hear from the Holy Scriptures. I ask, Father, that you put words into my mouth this morning that become a blessing to those who hear them. May it be the Holy Spirit using me to convey the message that you, O oh God, have for everyone listening and watching. May those who have ears hear your message this morning. We pray this and a whole lot more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay with us as we continue with our praise and worship. Darkness. Cry. 
When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Oh, there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name
sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track. Sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track. Christ Point Kids TV Pointing Kids to Christ Remember to download the Christ Point Church Melbourne app free from the App Store and Google Play Subscribe to our YouTube channel Follow us on Facebook. And visit our website. Christ Point Church Melbourne, the place to belong. Faith. What is it? Being sure of our hope. Convinced of what we can't see. By faith, we understand the world was set in order at God's command. By faith, Abel offered God a greater sacrifice than Cain. And for his faith, God commended him as righteous. By faith, Noah trusted God and constructed an ark for the deliverance of his family. By faith, Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, his only son, believing God would still fulfill his promises. By faith, Moses chose to be mistreated with the people of God rather than enjoy sin's fleeting pleasure. By faith, God's chosen nation crossed the Red Sea on dry ground and praised him as it swallowed up the Egyptians. By faith, Rahab the prostitute escaped destruction because she welcomed the spies in peace. Time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, David, and the prophets. By faith, they administered justice shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire. But others were imprisoned, murdered, and wandered in deserts, mountains, and openings in the earth. We are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So get rid of every weight, of every sin, and run. Run with endurance the race set before us. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. He is the champion and guide of our faith. For promised joy, he endured the cross, thought nothing of its shame, and having risen again, has been handed his deserved glory at the right hand of the throne of God. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this Sunday service here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. As always, it is for me a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's Word with you. Now, remember to keep up to date with us by the Christ Point Church, Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and also your Android ones. Remember also to follow us on Facebook, as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels and to check out our website. 
Please remember to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the gospel of Jesus to the ends of the earth. This 2022, the focus of our church, of your church, is growth. Not in size nor numbers, but rather spiritual growth. Over the last few months, we have spoken about the growth of Jesus, His baptism, how He overcame temptation, and other aspects of His life. Over the next few months, we shall continue covering messages that will oversee different topics which will allow us to grow spiritually. Through our theme on growth for the year, we want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, and the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. This morning, we shall begin our series entitled, Faith 2022. And the first installment of the series this morning is entitled, The Bible, the Authority for Faith. Let us begin by reading from the Holy Scriptures in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. And the Word of God tells us the following, And how, from infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If I were to ask you to look around and see and read the news and see what's happening around us, it is quite frightening. However, in our frightening times, we have a need for intelligent faith that can face the realities of life and still be anchored to the reality of God and His love and care for every single one of us. That includes you and I. But the question is, what is the authority for this faith? Well, it is the Bible, the revealed Word of God to us. Only through the Bible can we know of God's character and His work. Only in the Bible can we read of God's acts among us. The editor of a well-known London newspaper many years ago once sent a letter to inquire to a hundred important men, his peers, members of parliament, the university professors, authors, and merchants, a very list of people, very important people that is. And he asked the following question. Suppose you were sent to prison for three years and could only take three books with you. Which three would you choose? Please state them in order of their importance. Out of the replies, 98 put the Bible first in their list. Few of these men were keen about religion. Many were not even churchgoers. Others were agnostics or atheists. Yet they knew that no other could give them cheer and comfort and help in dark and difficult days. But why was this, though? The Bible is not just any book. It is the book of life eternal, unchanging, ever dependable. Because of this very fact, the Bible is our authority for faith. We know that faith can be true because we know the Bible is true. Bernard Rams stated the following, The Bible is not the authority for the Christian because it was written by religious geniuses nor is it the Christian's authority because it has been pragmatically verified through the centuries, nor because it inspires great religious experience. The Bible is binding upon the Christian because it is a part of the organism of divine revelation. It is a divine revelation in written form in various literary genres. The Bible is authoritative because it is the Word of God. That is, it is part of the organism of revelation, and for no other reason. This is our authority for faith, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. We can know God and have faith in God through the revelation of Himself given in the Bible. Now, there are four points that I want to highlight this morning in regards to the authority of faith. And the first of those is that the Bible is the authority for faith because of its inspiration. The word inspiration means God breathed. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says the following, All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now verse 16 highlights as it states, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All the Scriptures were written by men who were inspired or breathed into by God. Of course, Paul was writing about the Old Testament Scriptures at this point. At the time of his writings, the New Testament had not been completely written and collected. But if Paul claimed for the Old Testament was true, it is surely true for the New Testament Scriptures also. We must confess that we do not know exactly how God went about inspiring these men who wrote the scriptures. We know that they recorded the acts of God. 
and we know too that they used their own personalities and vocabularies in doing it. By reading these words from these men, we know that God acted among us. This we know for certain. And we also know that the Holy Spirit then inspired people to record these acts of God. The Holy Spirit also illumines these records. But we also know that God still speaks to us out of these pages of the Bible. So it seems to be a process of revelation, inspiration, and illumination. We must also consider that Scripture forever stands as authority. Repeated attacks have been made on the Bible, but it still stands strong and God still speaks through it to you and me. Only inspiration can account for this. The second point that I want to highlight this morning in regards to the authority of faith is that the Bible is the authority for faith because of its importance. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 asserts that Scripture is profitable. This ought to mean something to this materialistic culture of ours. The Word of God has profit for us. It is useful. It is important to our lives. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching. It is useful for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness. Notice how, one, it is important for the teaching of doctrine. The Bible must be the source of our doctrine. All the doctrines or all the teachings to which we subscribe must be tested against God's Word as revealed in the Bible. What we believe and how we live are tied closely together. We cannot expect to find all the answers clearly outlined for us. But, however, if the explicit answer for every social question of every age were contained in the Bible, it would soon be outdated. In the Bible, though, we find the principles that guide all who believe in God, no matter what century it is. The particular problem might change. The principles of God do not change because God does not change. He is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number two is the fact that it is important for conviction. Reproof here does not mean fault-finding so much as it means conviction. In the Bible, we find the conviction of our sins. Three, it is also important for correction. The Bible must correct our understanding and our obedience. The Amplified New Testament translates it as for correction of errors and restoration to obedience. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The real meaning of this is that all theories, all theologies, and all ethical teachings are to be tested by the teachings of the Bible. For it is also important for instruction in righteousness. This could be understood as training in good living. There is no other place to learn the meaning of righteousness than from Him who is righteous, God as revealed in Jesus Christ. Now, the third point that I want to highlight this morning, or for us to have a look at, is in regards to the authority of faith, that is, the Bible is the authority for faith because of its intent. There are two main sub-points that I want to mention, though, in regards to this Bible's intent through the authority for faith. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 tells us, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So, number one is the fact that it has the intent of salvation for you and for me. We read in the letters of Timothy, Titus, and Philemon in the Daily Study Bible about a culpateur or a seller of Christian books who was caught one night by brigands. Or what is a brigand? Well, a member of a gang who ambushes and robs people in the mountains. And this happened in a forest in Sicily. He was held up at gunpoint. He was ordered to light a fire and to burn his books. He lit the fire and then asked if he might read a little from each book before he dropped it into the flames. He began reading the book of Psalms, then he moved on to the Good Samaritan, then he read the Proverbs, then he went on to read from the Sermon on the Mount, then he went to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and at the end of the reading, the brigand said, hey, hold on a minute, that's a good book. We won't burn that one. Give that one to me. In the end, not one book was burnt. The brigand left the culpature and went off into the darkness with the books. Years later, that same man turned up again. This time, he was a Christian minister, and it was the reading of the books that he attributed the change. So let us read verse 17 again. It says, So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
the other sub point that I want us to see here has the same intent and also is equally important as the first one. It has the intent of equipping for service. Salvation is only the beginning of the Christian life. The Lord intends for the Christian to serve Him and only Him. The scriptures will completely equip a person for service. In these frightening times where we hear and read of wars and rumors of wars, viruses and their variants, death and destruction, crime and evil acts, and many other frightening things that occur worldwide, we can have faith in God. Yes, we can. Because the authority of faith, or the authority for faith, is the Bible. It leads us to God. It leads us to Jesus. It leads us to salvation. What you and I need to start doing is we need to start reading the Bible. We need to start following its teachings. We need to begin following God. We need to begin following Jesus. So my invitation to you this morning is to come to Jesus today. If you, my dear friend, have not yet let Jesus Christ come into your life to be your shepherd, to be your savior, to be your Lord, to be your king, to be your friend, today is the perfect day to do so. Let him become the Lord of your life today. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, the following, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. If you are not yet one of his disciples, open the door of your heart and let him begin his good work in you today. Let him have command over your life. Now, would you like to fully surrender your all to Jesus today? God has given us a new day, a new opportunity, a new chance, if you will, this morning to be obedient and not rebellious. God wants to continue building His church and He wants you to be a part of it. Yes, you! Going to heaven has nothing to do with how good you are or what religion you belong to or even what church you attend. The Bible tells us very clearly how we may know 100% for sure that we'll go straight to heaven when we die. There are four simple truths that we must understand. The first of those is the fact that we all have sinned. The book of Romans tells us this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God's word tells us that we're all sinners by nature and also by choice. We have all broken God's holy laws and we stand guilty and condemned before Him. No one is perfect. Now the truth number two is the fact that there is punishment for our sins. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reminds us, For the wages of sin is death. Now because God is holy, He must punish sin. And the punishment that God requires for sin is death. There are two deaths mentioned in the Bible. There is a physical death and also the spiritual death, where we must be punished for our sins by being separated from God forever in the lake of fire and no good works or, or no religion can save us. Every unsaved sinner is headed for hellfire. But you know what? There is hope for you and I. Which brings me to our third truth, and that is the fact that Jesus Christ took our punishment. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, but God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 3.16 tells us of the love of God for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus Christ, God's only Son, came to earth to save us from our sins. He died on the cross for our sins and rose again three days later. He took our punishment upon Himself so that we might go to heaven. Which brings me to our fourth and final truth, and that is the fact that we, you and I, can be saved right now. Salvation is in the person of Jesus Christ. No religion, no church, no works, no baptism, no communion, nor confession can save us. Jesus Christ alone is our Savior. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 13 states, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to finish this morning by asking you the following, Have you accepted Jesus into your heart? Have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? Today is a great day to allow Jesus into your heart. He came to die on a wooden cross for my sins, for your sins, and those of the world. You can be saved right now if you will admit your sin and guilt and repent. Turn from your sin and what you are currently trusting and turn to Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for your sins and rose from the grave on the third day. Call and ask Jesus to forgive you and save you right now. So don't go home this morning without the best gift that you'll ever get, and that is the gift of salvation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ through His death and resurrection. So look, look unto Him, my friend, look unto God Almighty, look unto Jesus, and you will be saved. If you want to take home this gift of salvation today, open your heart to Jesus and repeat with me this prayer.
Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day, defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord, and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We want to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. So I encourage you to make contact with us via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices, as well as your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, via YouTube, and our website. I'm Carlos Corrado, Senior Pastor and Founder of Christ Point Church Melbourne. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you again later tonight at 6.30 p.m. as we join Pastor Peter Anthony. Then next week at 9 a.m. to our Spanish service, then at 10 a.m. and once again at 6.30 p.m. to our regular English services as we continue with our theme on growth for the year. Remember also to join us throughout the week to our various activities and messages through social media in our app. I want to invite every single one of you to close your eyes, bow your heads, and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, thank you once again for allowing us to hear your holy word. Thank you that you make all things new for us and the opportunities you give us to get to know you more and more through your holy word. Thank you for reminding us how much we need you and how much we need to rely on your presence to fill us every single day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus, to earth to die for our sins. We thank you, Father, for you forgive us of our sins and transgressions and want to release us from our guilt. We thank you, Father, because you have given us another opportunity this morning to come to your Son, Jesus. Give us, Father, the courage to turn away from sin and to turn to embrace Jesus today. We thank you for reminding us that there is no other name on earth or heaven that surpasses your glorious name. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and generosity in giving us all that we need and beyond. We thank you, Father, as you remind us that no matter the situation, Jesus is the answer. We pray for everyone who is watching and listening to us. Bless them abundantly, Heavenly Father. Lord God, help us to praise you, help us to trust you, help us to serve you, help us to share your love and mercy, help us to glorify you, and this week may we live for you, O oh God. Use us, Heavenly Father, to make your word be fully known throughout the world, beginning with our family, our friends, and the people that we encounter. We ask that you help us to stay alert in the dark world that we're living. We ask that you help us to be the salt and light in this broken world, that we would be loving and gracious, yet unyielding to sin. We ask that you help us to remember to put on your armor daily, for you give us all that we need to stand firm in our faith in you. We want to thank you that you are far greater than anything that we face here in this life, and we have overcome because you have set us free. We thank you for your truth that no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. Lord, we ask for your peace. We ask for your protection. We trust you for your constant work on our behalf. We, Lord Jesus, as a family, stand together in your great and powerful name, believing that you are with us and in us. We thank you, Father. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you the strength and the confidence to follow. And the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
poderoso, grande Eres increíble Venciste en las tinieblas, Cristo Eres increíble Todo poderoso, grande Eres increíble Venciste en las tinieblas, Cristo Exaltado estás The preacher has finished his message. It is now the time for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We want to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. Also to help you go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know Him yet. I encourage you to contact us via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and for your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, YouTube, and or our website. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you next week.